And man, do we have a lot to cover today. We'll be on the air in seconds. It's our top of the hour break, and oh man, it's all coming down. Here we go. On the air since 1977, it's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Indeed it is. Welcome to the program, everyone. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to Florida's longest running radio show, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. And I'm here to tell you we got a lot to cover on today's program, and we're going to cover a lot. Um, Monday is the day that Letitia James... By the way, can we do... From this point forward, can we say that... Uh, the oppressed people in this country are not African Americans. I see a black attorney general, black female attorney general in New York, illegally, unjustly, and corruptly start to seize the property of a president of the United States. I see a sugar mama, who's an African American woman, Fannie Willis in Fulton County, Georgia, bring a case against a president of the United States. I see a very overweight district attorney, Alvin Bragg, who's African-American, who's bringing these, these skanky, or, uh, uh, skanky Stormy Daniels case against Trump, a white president of the United States. I see the judge in the J6 case that Trump is facing in Washington, D.C., African-American woman go, uh, presiding over a case with a president of the United States. So can we do, dispense with all this victimhood from African American? Please, I mean, give me a break. Okay, now, um, Letitia, she's making plans to start seizing Trump property. And I, I have talked uh, from time to time that there's a big mystery about Letitia James. How did she accumulate a net worth of fifth? $15 million when she's worked in public service her entire life. She does not have a rich husband. She does not have a rich ex-husband. And she has no family money. And I want to, in the beginning, before we get into uh, the details of what's happening with President Trump, the greatest president ever, I just want to go through in some more detail than I have in the past on not just how rich Letitia James is, but what she owns. And the question is, how did she acquire this? How can the, you know, you've got this woman claiming financial crimes against people who we know how they made their money, Donald Trump, and she's worth $15 million and no one's bothering to look into this except me. I'm the only one talking about it. So let me go through this. Um, I'm going to uh, tweet this article that uh, I'm reading from, but it, it's, um, it goes through her $15 million net worth, Letitia James, okay? And I want to go through this. Uh, her real estate assets. Letitia James uh, owns a lot of real estate and some big money real estate. Listen to this. Highlights of, Le uh, of Letitia James' real estate collection in New York includes a luxurious townhouse in Manhattan's Tribeca district that she purchased for $420,000, a historic brownstone in Harlem that she bought for $210,000, and a spacious duplex in the Bronx it's valued at $850,000. Um, according to documents, she has multiple bank accounts. Her personal account with Chase Bank has a balance of $850,000. She has a savings account at the Bank of America that has a balance of one point five. dollars million dollars. Now, I'm not against people getting rich and being rich and everything else, but when you're a corrupt attorney general, I'll sue him for you. I'll sue him. The art of the steal and all this crap she talks about. 
She's done nothing but work in public service her entire life. She has the highest position she's ever had, Attorney General for the state of New York, which, which pays um, 200 and some thousand dollars a year. So how does she do this? Uh, Letitia James has an ownership interest in over seven real estate properties, some under her name, some associated with family members. Oh, straw purchasing maybe. I don't know. The combined valuation of Letitia James' properties is around $1.4 million. She draws annual rental income approaching $200,000 a year. Letitia James' investment portfolio has a value of $2.6 million between equities and government securities. She hold, I mean, where, where's all this money coming from? I don't know. Maybe, she may, maybe she's like Oprah. She's good with the stock picks. Maybe she's like... Nancy Pelosi's husband, all his stock picks go to the moon. I, I don't know, but I, I want to go through her um, work history and let's find out where she was earning enough money to amass such a fortune. All right, now let me go through this. Oh, my goodness. Okay. She, um, Letitia James graduated from Lehman College in the Bronx. She got her law degree at Howard University. So for some reason, she decided to go to a racially segregated school. Who does that? Usually a racist, I would imagine. Um, she went, she uh, got her law degree from Howard University, and then she worked at a, as a public defender. Public defender, that's almost like volunteer work. Then she worked on the staff of the New York State Assembly, later as a New York State Assistant Attorney General in the Brooklyn Regional Office. Letitia served as a member of the New York City Council from 2004 to 2013. Uh, from 2013 to 2018, she was the New York City Public Advocate. She ran for governor in 2022, but she dropped out of that. This is her official biography I'm reading from. Letitia James began her career as a public defender for legal aid. Legal aid, I mean, they don't even, like, pay you. She served on Mario Cuomo's task force on diversity in the judiciary. And she worked on the staff of the New York State Assembly on top of these things. So... Where'd the 15 million come from? I don't know. I'm not saying that she did anything wrong. I'm not saying she did anything illegal. We don't know because no one's looking into it. And when you're running around seizing property from a man who we know how he made his money and you are a millionaires 15 times over when you, you never had a job outside of government. I think it's a fair question to ask, how did you get the $15 million, Letitia James? Don't you? Am I being unfair? Do, are there report? I have no resources. Okay, I'm me. I, it's all I got here in Florida. I got no no researchers. I got no budget. I got no staff. But you know the the media that are based in New York, they do. Can't they get Fox Business? This is right down their alley. Fox Business, can, Breitbart, all these people. James, let's find out how Letitia made her fifteen million dollars. And I'll tell you this: if she made it legitimately. Fine. 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 But let's find out. Let's not just assume. She's accusing Donald Trump of financial crimes, which everyone knows don't, there are no crimes. She's the criminal by pursuing this. But people need to start looking into this woman and her money. Do you know that she is, in this article that I'm reading from, 
She is one of the wealthiest state attorney generals in America. There's 50 of them, and she's one of the richest. They've had a job out of the government. So where did the money come from? I don't know. But I think it's relevant to ask, since she's accusing people of financial crimes, in particular in real estate, and she's loaded up on expensive real estate that somehow she bought with very small salaries. Now I think she makes about 220 or so thousand dollars a year as the New York State Attorney. And that may seem like a lot of money to people, but in New York City, that ain't a lot of money. So, I mean, am I being unfair here? Are any of you curious? And, and by the way, she has, uh, she's a really weird woman. Listen to this. I was, I was reading this because somebody had called me the other day and said she's got uh, kids. I, that's not true. Um, listen to this. This is uh, from Wikipedia, and it tells us about her personal life. Listen to this. Letitia James lives in the Clinton Hill neighborhood in Brooklyn, and she's a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church. As of May 2022, James, Letitia James said that she received an abortion early in her tenure as a member of the New York City Council. Letitia James said this, I was just elected, and I was faced with a decision of whether to have an abortion or not. I chose to have an abortion. I walked proudly in the Planned Parenthood, and I make no apologies to anyone. Nothing else here. No family, no husband, kids, nothing there. Well, one child, but she went to Planned Parenthood. Am I being unfair here? Are you curious as to how she made $15 million, that's her net worth, $15 million working for government her whole life without any family backing or rich husband or anything. Are any of you curious about that? I'm curious. Now, today is Friday, March 22nd, and on Friday's show, it is Open Phones, okay? We call it Open MAGA Mike Friday. And on Open MAGA Mike Friday, Open Phones on Friday, you are welcome to call in about any and everything you have on your mind. You're not limited to the topics that I bring up, like you are the other four days of the week. So you're welcome to call in about anything and everything on your mind on Friday's show. Um, but I do hope that you find the, the, the topics I'm bringing up interesting enough to comment on. Um, but I also want to hear your thoughts on the $15 million fortune that Letitia James has, much of it in real estate. And she has over mil millions in the bank just sitting there in cash. Where'd all that come from? See, Fannie Willis, she's got a rich, connected daddy. So that's a little different. Letitia James, she don't have any of that. Our number's toll-free, 1-888-465-2637. It's a toll-free call no matter where you're listening. 1-888-465-2631. And as I say, it is open phones, but I do want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, also, a group of billionaires are gathering forces to put up the money to give to Letitia so that she doesn't start seizing Trump's properties. We'll talk about that as well as the show goes on and much, much more. All right. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. My name is Brian Craig. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Now, guys. If you have not already, order your Mighty Maga Lion. You know, uh, there's a link in the description of the video. And if you're watching live, there is a link pinned to the top of the chat to order your Mighty Maga Lion. These are available exclusively through me at MightyMagaLion.com. MightyMagaLion.com. And this is the only Trump-inspired merchandise actually wearing the Maga hat. 
There's uh, no better way to watch a Trump rally than holding close to you your Mighty MAGA Lion, which also makes a great gift. If you order during the live show today, your Mighty MAGA Lion will be mailed out today. Uh, I got a big batch that I'm mailing out today, and I will add yours to it. So if you order during the live show, your Mighty MAGA Lion will be mailed to you today. Now, um, if you order more than one, you get a discount. Okay, MightyMagaLion.com. Again, there's a link in the description of the video. There's also a link pinned to the top of the live chat, or you could just go to the website, MightyMagaLion.com. Order yours, okay? And uh, they're very cute and cuddly, just like President Trump. Yeah, I mean, this is just nuts that's going on here. This is just nuts. And these are questions that have to be um, fleshed out. Alluded to Mar Lago. Um. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> we are coming back in forty two seconds. Rachel Way, Tom Laporta is honest, knowledgeable, and reliable, and he'll never sell you a roof you don't need. Laporta Contracting has been in the roofing and contracting business since 1988, and his services cover the east and west coast of Florida and everywhere in between. Tom Laporta can handle any type of roofing job, too. Residential roofing and repair, commercial roofs, schools, municipal buildings, office buildings, emergency repairs. If it's roofing, Tom Laporta can do it. Call Tom Laporta right now on his cell phone, 954 954- 604 4602 954 604 4602 and online laportacontracting.com Now back to the Steve Kane show with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 959 FM, <clears throat> Treasure Coast on 1069 FM, Harrison Boca on 953 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 969 FM, and anywhere in the world. All right, callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian. Free shipping continues with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. Huge sales going on, including the $25 extravaganza on some of my favorite MyPillow products, including the six-piece MyPillow towel set, $25 with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. The uh, Giza uh, pillow, which is an upscale luxury MyPillow, $25. The MyPillow pet beds and many more. But it is free shipping site-wide, no matter how large or small your purchase, and also no matter how light or heavy, free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. All right, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Montana Mark. Hey, Mark, what's up? It wouldn't surprise me if they found out that the is getting money from China, but... I think, like you, it's kind of curious where that money comes from. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know people that are wealthy, okay? I know people that are rich, richer than that, okay? And I know how they make their money. I don't know anyone in my life that's a millionaire that uh, has worked for the government their whole life, that doesn't have some rich family or spouse. I I don't know that. So I'm trying to find out how she made the $15 million. And I, and I think this is a fair question. And so far as who's behind her, Letitia James is not doing this on her own. 
She has p uh, dark forces behind her. And you, you, you think maybe China. Maybe she has dark forces behind her. You know, all this attack on Trump, it, it's, that money can come from any place. And the thing is, the banks that work at Trump says that he has never done anything wrong. So... Yeah, I mean, you know, so far, I mean, listen, he's done nothing wrong. He's done no crimes. Everybody knows this. You know, um, when, you get a, when you get a loan from a bank and you use, you know, like a mortgage on a property, the bank determines the value of that property, not you as the property owner. So if there was any wrongdoing here, it would be by the bank, and there's not. So, I, you know, I, and, and you, you know, so this is, this is the way it is. We know there's nothing here. We know she's corrupt. But, you know, listen, everyone knew that Al Capone was a murderer. They couldn't prove it. They looked into his finances and said, how did he get all his money? And that's what landed him in prison. He went to Alcatraz, if you remember, for his uh, financial issues, not, not his murders, Al Capone. So I, I think people should at least, if, if Letitia James made her $15 million legitimately, that's fine. And I'm curious to know how so I can replicate it. How, how can I have a job making l very little money and become a millionaire 15 times over like Letitia James? Don't, wouldn't you like to know? Well, yes. And being there hiding everything about her means that she was doing something corrupt and she's breaking the law. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not even sure I believe her story, by the way, about walking into the Planned Parenthood and having an abortion. Um, I've known a handful of, of uh, women that have had abortions in my life, you know, and none of them go around bragging about it, you know, and as far as I know, she just said she had an abortion in Planned Parenthood to get some street cred among the liberal New York circles, right? I mean, who brags about it? I I proudly walked into Planned Parenthood and got the, and, and had the abortion. Who, who says that? There's only one person to believe, and that's Donald Trump. Correct. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, and guys, um, if you don't, follow me on YouTube, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. Catch my weekend shows. I upload my podcast there and a lot of other content separate from the radio show here. I will be um, doing uh, both live shows and podcasts throughout the weekend on my YouTube channel because so much is going on, okay? So, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, Mike. What's up? You know, my, my question about Letitia James is how was she able to go from public defender to AG, you know? Well, she just ran for different offices. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm more interested in how'd she get the $15 million working for the government all her life. How'd she do that? How's that possible? How is that possible? And, you know, how's that possible? I mean, look, it takes money to go to law school, right? It takes money to... Well, she, she may have gotten she may have gotten student loans for all that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, there, but, but you can easily explain that away. But how do you explain she's got millions of dollars in cash in the bank? Yeah, how, how do you explain it? And, and I, don't, I, I think we've pretty well established that she's, she's a Soros gal or something like that. She, she, George Soros has donated to her campaign thousands of dollars, yeah, openly. So, yeah, yeah there's a Soros connection. There is a Soros connection, and I mean that's the thing. I mean, how did she go from being nothing to being worth that much money? That's that's the question. And since she's so interested in financial crimes, I think she would want to share how she amassed a fifteen million dollar uh, net worth. So she, this is how you do it legitimately, right? But I get you know, but nobody's asking her. And, that's, and, and, and basically, there's a story in the New York Post about her basically doing the same thing to another guy that she's done to Trump, ah. taking this guy's house, you know. Yeah. This, this isn't the first time she's done this. That's right. Hey, Mike, I got to run for the break. Thanks for the call. 
I'm Brian Craig. Our number, now remember, it is Friday, Open MAGA Mic Friday, and on Fridays you're welcome to call in about any and everything on your mind. You are not limited to the uh, topics that I bring up, okay? one 465 2631 888-465-2631. Call us on hold. Stand by. We'll be right back after this. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve King. Yeah. Let me know in the chat, um, how do you think Letitia amassed a $15 million fortune? All the callers are real, Kevin. We do not have uh, put up callers. Every caller is real. Yep. That's okay. No big deal. It happens. Yeah. These are important questions to ask. And I think they're legit. I wish other people were asking these questions. Hot stock tips from Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi, yeah. <clears throat> mhm. Mm if you're on hold, hang in there. Yes, the mighty MAGA lion, cute and cuddly. This this guy, it's just to tell you how durable they are. This guy here is the one I bring all the time to the radio station, took him all around, took him to Trump's star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, been on airplanes. I'm going to take him on the cruise. I bring him to and from work all the time, and he looks looks brand new. These are very well made. So order yours, the uh, mighty MAGA lion. There's a link in the description of the video. There's a link pinned to the top of the chat. Or you can just go to the website, MightyMagaLion.com. These are available exclusively through me. You can get these nowhere else, have these custom made. And this is the only Trump-inspired merchandise with the MAGA hat. So there you go, MightyMagaLion.com. And order yours, guys. <clears throat> I thought Bernie had five houses. <clears throat> well, thank you, Beach Life. <clears throat> Didn't Bernie have uh, five houses, or is it three? What, does that include his uh, <clears throat> summer camp? Camp. He's got this. He's got a summer camp. <clears throat> if you order during the live show, they will go out today. No podcast last night. I ju well, remember I was having chest pains the other day. <clears throat> so my wife is uh, having me take it easy a little bit here and there. <clears throat> she says I'm doing too many shows, <clears throat> and uh, made me prom. She wanted me to go to the hospital, and I didn't. And she made me promise that next time I have chest pains, I need to go right to the hospital. <clears throat> which I will. You know what they say, happy wife, happy life. <clears throat> I do not golf. I go to the uh, driving range. Yeah, Joe Thomas, he's a big golfer. He's always tried to get me to go golfing. And I said, if you take me golfing, you, I, I'll be the worst. You'll lose all respect for me because I, I really haven't been on the course much, just the driving range. 
which I, I enjoy the driving range. <clears throat> the golf courses here have gators on them, though. The golf course by my house has the biggest gator I've ever seen. <clears throat> I mean, massive. Here we go. Craig, celebrating 47 years on Ah yes, welcome back. 35 minutes after the hour. Call is on hold. Stand by. I, I just got I gotta get one quick thing off my chest. You know, I took the turnpike here today, and I I was so pissed off on the you know, the turnpike is basically two lanes, most of it. The left lane is for passing, not cruising. At 65 or 70 miles an hour, by the way. Okay? The left lane is for passing. Isn't it that way in every state? Isn't the left lane not for passing in every state? I was getting so... I, I thought I was going to be late. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is, good morning. This is Richie. Hey, Richie. What's up? All right. I'm going to answer your question about Leticia uh, James, okay? I had a friend that worked for this mayor of New York. He worked in the office of the mayor of New York City, had a mansion out in the Hamptons. He had nothing as a kid. He grew up in the Bronx, broke his family. Uh, New York is full of unions. You, you can't, you can't, you got to get, it's all political favors. It's, it's graft. It's the most corrupt thing that you ever seen in your life. Oh, so you mean bribes. You mean, you mean people that work for the bribes. They pay you money so you help them out. All over New York, it's and, and the people that are inside that inside that click there at City Hall click and and like her and all of them, they're all making out like fat cats, and 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 that's why you'll never see anyone. In well, well, you know, if I, I I'm going to tell you this, I, I'm here in Florida. If I were based in New York City, I probably wouldn't be talking this way because it wouldn't be safe to start my car when I left the radio station. You, you understand what I mean? But, um, but you know what? Uh, not everybody's in New York, and there are people all over the place, including the Trump organization, they, you know, who could uh, do some investigating. She has millions of dollars in cash in the bank, man. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it but they all do. That's, that's the thing. Well, what, does that, what, what does that mean? So, we shouldn't, so she shouldn't be investigated? No, she's going to get away with it. You can No, 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 no. Listen, listen. I'm not talking about arresting her on financial crimes and getting a perp walk in New York City. This is corrupt. But investigative journalists and uh, individual wealthy MAGA people can hire, uh, you know, these these high level private investigators that are like ex uh, Israeli intelligence, ex massage, massage, massage. I need a massage, ex Mossad. And to and do an investigation and find out how she got her damn fifteen million dollars, and ex and get it out there in the public so she could be exposed for a crook if she's a crook. Uh, she is a crook, but so is the president of the United States and the Democrats protect them. New York is all democratic. You can't so, I, Republican and be in the in the walls over there. I'm telling you, it's it's, it's a system there that's unbelievable. You just you have to be there to see, see it. No, but listen, listen. Listen, I know this. Everybody knows this, okay? Even here, yeah, I mean, go to Broward County, you know, the, all the, the government people live on the intercoastal waterway, okay? You know, give me a break. They're all, you know, government, they're all corrupt. Look at Bernie Sanders has five houses. Bernie Sanders, is, so he has five houses. One of them is a, is a summer camp. Who has a summer camp? Perverts and weirdos. I mean, he does. He has a summer camp. So, obviously... But she is about, on Monday, she's planning on beginning the seizure of Trump property for financial crimes that he did not commit. So when, when you, you know, I was talking about Al Capone. They didn't get Al Capone for the murders that he committed. They got him on financial crimes, okay, because he had all this wealth that he couldn't account for. And Letitia James should be exposed publicly. No one's going to, pro first, listen. No one, no, no Democrat in New York is going to prosecute another Democrat, especially a black female Democrat. I get that. But she could be publicly exposed for amassing 
$15 million through corruption. And, and that would be very powerful, and that needs to happen. Okay. Obviously, obviously, she didn't do this legitimately. Yeah, what else you got? No, no. I want to ask you, you're going to, you might laugh at this one. Montana Mock, is he, does he have a voiceover in the Bad Jamboree in Disney World? He, he very well may. He very well may, yeah. Now, the other thing is, there's a Venezuelan, there's a Venezuelan on TikTok. And it's going viral everywhere. First, he did. I, I brought it up. Oh. Yeah, it, it, isn't it interesting? I, I played that on the air yesterday, and now it's gone viral. Yeah, I know. The guy that's telling people to steal people's homes. Yes. And he also told people, he's the same guy that told people, get, uh, have, have an anchor baby, and the government, and you don't have to work. Mm -hmm. Get over. I mean, this is getting really ridiculous. He's, he's ticking off a lot of people, and he's on TikTok. I just, I just went on TikTok this morning. I, ne I, I very rarely ever do because it's... It no, I, 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 uh, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't hear me play it on the air yesterday since so much of yesterday's show was talking about you. I would have thought you wouldn't have missed a second of the show. But... but <laughs> I couldn't say something about it. Listen, not for nothing. Not for nothing. I did that on purpose. And I, and, and I did because... When I say... Because I, like I said yesterday, I believe that everybody should be treated fairly. There's no, in the old southern days, black people would have to walk on one side of the street and they had to, they had to tell them off and look up to the whites that were walking on the other side of the street. I think that was disgusting. But reverse today, I think it's disgusting. And speaking out because of a race, whether you're black or white at each other is terrible. Yeah, I agree. That's all we got. I want to throw a get along for God's sake. You got, you got people, it's like reverse hatred. And that's what I see. Yeah, but you've got, you, listen, listen, the, as, a, as a Broward County bus driver, you're almost like a prison guard, right? I mean, you're like driving a prison bus. So, and you drove through some bad, bad areas because I, and I, 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 I did ride Richie's bus quite often, okay? Uh, when I was like in middle school and my, my first year of high school. And I was, I was on one of your buses once. And, the, and I was sitting, there was this guy at the back of the bus. He was talking to me and my friend. He had a pistol in his pants. He showed us the pistol. So you spent an entire career driving around um, criminal, criminal, black, cr criminal black people through Fort Lauderdale, through Broward County. And very nice people also. Very nice black. Yeah, so, but, but, a lot, but a lot of criminals. And, you know, so you've got, so you've got you know, you've got a perspective. You got an experience. I'm going to tell you real fast because I hope people, I want people to understand what this is all about. Because Brian will know this. I left the bus terminal with the bus going down Broward Boulevard. The bus terminal was in was an homeless camp across the street. Yeah. With needles on. Yeah. Behind behind the McDonald's behind the McDonald's on Broward Boulevard. Yeah, downtown. The first thing I hit was a liquor store and the Salvation Army. With, yeah, talent talent liquors talent liquors. Right, right. Then, the, and then, then, then I would go under the train tracks to the juvenile detention center. Then I would come out of that, and I would go to to, to uh, the the uh, what do you call it? That Henderson Mental Clinic. Oh yeah, that's great. Broward County Sheriff's Department. Then you would continue on, and you would get two two parole offices that that one state and one federal that people on parole. Then you would have soup kitchens all over Broward Boulevard. Oh, yeah. You crossed, crossed 441, you had the food stamp office. After that, you, it became civilization on your way towards the uh, Southwest Mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. And I, when, I, when I used to ride the bus with you is if I would take the bus to the Galleria. And I'd have to go through that transfer station on Broward Boulevard. And I, I remember that homeless... Remember... Remember when somebody put a 12-gauge shotgun to someone's head there at that tr at that bus depot and blew their head off? I mean, it was a it was you were in some dangerous place, man. Brian, they had they had stabbings there. They had fights there every night. They had they had a oh yeah. Uh, when they opened that place, I'm going to say this real fast. They opened this new facility up to, to and, and it's, they spent 15 million dollars, I believe, on it. In fact, I you, you probably you probably don't remember this. But it, it, this just popped in my mind. It's funny the things you remember sometimes, you know. You, you gave me a transfer once at that uh, bus station on Broward Boulevard, and I asked you which bus to take to the Galleria. You said, take that one. You said, don't hang around here. I, and I was like, 
I was like I was like thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. It was it was really dangerous. Yeah. I used to drive with a pipe in my bus because they weren't allowed. Were all allowed sometimes had pistols in them um, too. But yeah. I, I had I had a pipe because I was afraid to get I would be assaulted. Yeah. So 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 Richie 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 was basically um, driving around a prison bus. A prison guard, yeah. I, 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 I even got, I even went down and picked up the Mario boat people. Blew yeah, no, that's a tough. It's a tough. Uh, it's a tough way. All right, you take care, Richie. Thanks for the call. And uh, all right, we'll take our break and be back. The cold hard truth. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. Listen, are you in pain? If you're in pain, that means you haven't listened to me and gone to see Dr. Appleton and talked to him about his laser away pain treatment. You know, his laser away pain treatment works, guys. I've been telling you for quite some time, and it works on so many different types of pain. 
uh, rotary tears, herniated discs, acute pain, chronic pain, plantar fasciitis, fibromyalgia, spinal stenosis, sciatica, tinnitus, knee conditions, knee pain, neck pain, back pain, back injuries, post-surgical swelling, strains and sprains, work injuries, sports injuries, arthritis, bursitis, shoulder injuries, like he's helped me with. It works. And you know, the laser weight pain treatment is 100% painless. Dr. Appleton performs all the treatments himself, not an assistant, which is really amazing. And appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome even on Saturdays. Give him a call, 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. And online, appletoncairo.com. Okay, so CNN last night, they're, they're getting all excited over there because Letitia is going to start season Trump's property. She's gearing up. And they were talking about what Trump can do. All right, listen. At least 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-a-Lago, um, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions. And I think there could be a buyer for something like that. And Well, well this is interesting. So CNN is reporting that the value of Mar-a-Lago is in the hundreds of millions. Letitia says it's only worth 13. And let me tell you, I used President Trump's bathroom, and this is not an exaggeration, and I think anyone who has used President Trump's bathroom, which was, I didn't even have to go, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to use, you know, I didn't have to go. I drank some extra water and everything else. You know, it's like when you, it's like when you go to any lab test now, you know, you got to, you know, and they need a urine sample. I needed to produce a urine sample. So I, and this is not an exaggeration, okay? I have been in luxury bathrooms, in luxury hotels, and in luxury homes. The bathroom, and this is just one, I don't even know how many bathrooms they have there, is, is worth $13 million. I mean, just, you know. I mean, actually, the urinal itself, because President Trump has used it, is worth probably more than $13 million. But I mean, if you were just to build the, the bathroom right there, it, it, it's, it costs more than our houses by far. But CNN is reporting that Mar-a-Lago is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Really? Then what's, go, then what's Letitia talking about, CNN? Jerks. I, t- I tell you, you know. 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-a-Lago, um, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions, and I think there could be a buyer for something like that. And that would be literally, if you're talking about doing that between now and Monday, that's picking up the phone, calling someone, and then literally writing a check. Yeah, I mean, there could be plenty of international <coughs> people who want to buy that property. I mean, there's properties that are priced at 150 and 200 million that are nearby that. And Palm Beach is like the NVIDIA, NVIDIA, excuse me, of real estate. It's just shot up like a rocket. And people do want to live there. They've moved there. So I think that would be the best case scenario uh, as to property. If he's trying to sell quickly, I would encourage that. So, all right. Now, that's $240 million estimated. I mean, who knows? You know, he's a desperate seller in this case. Someone picks up the phone and makes that call this week. So I don't know what it would be. That's still half right. of what it would be. If you need at least 30 days to get... Okay. So, I mean, they're, so CNN is estimating, and they hate Trump, that mar a and that, by the way, that's very much under the value, but even CNN is saying that it's worth $240 million, quarter of a billion dollars. That's CNN. So why are they not calling for, you know, and this, what, you know, when you hear President Trump call these people Marxist and communist, how many of you have seen Dr. Zhivago? I love Dr. Zhivago. I've seen Dr. Zhivago many, many times. It has the worst ending of any movie ever made. But it's a good movie. And Dr. Zhivago is rich, and he comes back home to Moscow. Remember this scene? He comes back home to Moscow to his beautiful palace home, and it's got like 50 families living in it. You know, it's kind of like today with all the, you know, all these illegals that are just taking people's homes away from them. But, uh, and they tell him, who needs this much home? That's what they want to do. That's what these Marxists want to do to Trump. They want to seize his homes. They want to seize his properties. And, you know, I remember during, uh, you know, you got to understand what these people are sick. These are sick 
people and uh, they're evil and there's they don't know they're evil most of them okay most of, some of them do some of them don't you know biden was even joking around that trump's having money problems trump's not having money problems guy's so rich please a you know, break but um you know when operation iraqi freedom was going on and a rock fell Remember the Marines and, 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 and soldiers would take Saddam Hussein's palaces? He had palaces all over Iraq and they would take the palaces and then they'd give tours of the palaces and see what movies he had in his video collection. You know, he was a big Quentin Tarantino fan, Saddam Hussein, but they would go through the... That's what these evildoers want to do with President Trump. They want to seize his properties. They want to go through, give tours and show the dethroned king... The great MAGA king has been dethroned. And what they're, what they're really tr doing, they're, I mean, they're just in a rage. It's almost like the French Revolution going on here in so many ways. It's really scary. You know, here, here you have, and Biden joking around about it this uh, yesterday shows he's in collusion with these, with these monsters. Um. You, you have the Democrat Party and the, and the Republican establishment, what's left of it. You, you have them arresting and imprisoning the leader of the political opposition, Donald Trump. You have the Democrats, you have Biden and the Democrats tr attempting to seize all the cash money that the leader of the political opposition have, Donald Trump. Right? The, the penalty from this corrupt judge that puts his crotch in the face of girls on workout machines at the gym. Remember, told you about this. James O'Keefe caught it on video as he comes on to them. Creeper, okay. He saw what was in Trump's bank account and his judgment was almost equal to that. So the, the, uh, the Democrats, Biden and the rest, are trying to seize the home and personal property and business properties of the leader of the political opposition, right? I mean, look what's going on. And then what happened yesterday? There was a mass attack on our southern border from illegals who overwhelmed our border defenses yesterday. America's un literally under attack again. You know, um, after 9-11, there was a lot of unity in this country. It was, it was a time, do, do you know th that um, after 9-11, we didn't run commercials for 30 days? We, um, out of respect, it was, it was a, that's how bad of a time it was. What we did is at the end of each hour, um, we thanked all the sponsors for their support of the program. But during the actual show, we didn't run, take commercial breaks. Um, or do live spots or anything, or our call-ins, nothing for a month out of, out of respect on 9-11. And there was a lot of unity in this country. Remember, everyone was, uh, had those, remember we had those cool uh, American flags that were on this, those little posts and you would roll it up on your window. Everyone was driving around with their American flags on their car and everyone was driving around with their headlights on. You know, and there was all of this incredible unity. And first responders, without being called upon, took it upon themselves to go to New York City to try to save lives in the rubble there. Remember all of that? It was an amazing time of unity when our country was under attack. Well, we're under attack now, right? We've got this lawfare, which is an attack on our democracy. Not only is our southern border under attack and being overrun, but I don't know how many Americans are dead because of it. There are Americans who are dying every day at the hands of these border invaders, and there's no unity in this country. If 9-11 happened today, we wouldn't have this unity. We wouldn't. Because the left are radical, Marxist, anti-American lunatics. And that period of unity that we had 
after 9-11, those days are over. They really are. Now, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. Um, I've got uh, more that I'm going to get into, but it, of course, it is open phones on Friday, open MAGA mic Friday. And on Friday's show, you can call in about anything and everything you have on your mind. You're not limited to what I bring up, all right? Just so you know, it, and the number's toll-free, one 2631 888-465-2631. My name is Brian Craig. You're listening to Florida's longest-running radio show. We'll be right back. WSFS 104.3. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, okay, guys? This is where MAGA comes to talk. There's an article I'm looking for that I have, and I don't know where I put it.
All right. Call us on hold. Stand by. It's the Steve Kane Show. Yesterday, the largest uh, ground movement, the largest ground attack by Mexico on the United States since, I don't know, the War of Texas Independence took place. El Paso, a group of over 100 illegals attempted to enter the United States by rushing the border wall. It's, it's, it wasn't the Great Wall of Trump. It was barbed wire. Breaking through razor wire and knocking over guards in the process, around 600 illegals amassed at the border, and then the surge began. If that's not an attack, I mean, that's like Santa Ana here. Santa Ana, I mean, that's like Santa Ana in the Alamo. And Biden can't do anything about it because he's already cashed the checks and spent the money on blow from China for his kids. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, my God. It's me. Okay. Yeah, yes. Hey, what's on your mind? I don't, uh, I don't have an internet or a smartphone. Okay? I, I wanted to try to email you, but I couldn't because I was in Mexico. Okay? I don't know if I don't know I don't know I I don't know of anything official. No, unfortunately. It'd be a lot of money, but uh, I don't know of any official uh, things to do that with. Well, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a group, hold on, there's a group, there's a group of billionaires who are organizing over the weekend, I understand, and discussing uh, putting together a pot of cash to give the, to Letitia. Oh my God, okay, thank God, please God, help him. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, Tara, she's, she's in tears. You know, you, you guys understand what Donald Trump is going through for us? He doesn't have to do this. If he dropped out of the race, all this would disappear. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Mike. Sammy Nevada. Oh, hey, Doug. You know, if I say this, I can mention one more thing about the Eighth Amendment. I, when I looked at it, I said, wait a minute. It's only one sentence wrong. You know, back then, it was the, the, the people for the country, uh, not like they are now. I mean, if they wrote the Eighth Amendment now, it would be 2,000 pages long, you know. The, the, the country has, has gone way out of whack, you know. Uh, they, they, they just want to make these laws that are ridiculous. And, but anyway, I yeah, just uh, saying. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to cite the Eighth Amendment, but I'm, I don't know why they haven't done it yet. Now... Well, who are they going to cite? Who, wait, wait, hold on. Okay, the the Eighth Amendment is the amendment <coughs> about the unreasonable fines. Who are they going to Who are they going to cite it to? Nobody in New York cares. <coughs> yeah, but not, uh, a federal judge. They have to go to a judge. The the way that they've got. I mean, this is insane to me. But the way they have this, he has to put up the bond before he can go to the appeals court. And and the problem there's no. Do you know? Uh, now this is just off the top of my head. But Bernie Madoff, he had bail, and it was like $10 million, right? I mean, Kevin Bacon lost $10 million with Bernie Madoff. The bail was a fraction of the money he stole, right? I mean, there's never been... The, the, the laws that say you've got to pay the bond and pay all that, they didn't keep this in mind with what's going on with Letitia. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, that doesn't... They don't care. Don't, you know, this, this, listen, listen, during the, um, by, by the way, I know Doug's getting frustrated. It's open phones. I'll let you finish and then I'll talk. Yeah. The thing is, the other thing is about this border crossing. 
You never know. I mean, if you, if you remember when the Iranians took over our embassy in 1979 that was guarded by the U.S. Marines, and that was right after Vietnam, so these were well-trained Marines, the Iranians were able... Remember how the Iranians took over the embassy? I don't remember. Jimmy Carter was president, right? The Democrats were... Jimmy. The Marines did not have bullets in their guns guarding the embassy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so, so these, uh, the, these guns may not have ammunition in them at the southern border because to them everything's Kent State, even though the students at Kent State attack those soldiers. But, uh, yeah. I'd like to see what would happen if 600 people crossed into the White, the White House gate. You know, we I remember we were in um we were in on one of our cruises, we were in I can't remember which port it was. It was Saint Saint Martin, the British Virgin Islands. We were in, we were in this one port and one of our um um group a guy in our group left his ID in his cabin on the ship. And and he and they went on an excursion. They came back, and he couldn't get on. He couldn't get through it. His wife his wife came through, and and uh, then she came and got his uh, his documents and took him back. And then the border guards let him in, on board. Right? You know. I mean, this is the only country in the world where you need no documents, no ID. You can and and you come in here, and they set you and set you up with a life, and give you money every month. I, yeah, I don't blame those guys. Well. Yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, this is this is crazy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what's what's good? What is it? the good? The soldiers went fell. The U.S. soldiers on our southern border were knocked down and overrun. And that didn't turn out too well at the Alamo. Yeah, that's right. I know. All right, Doug, take take care. You know, th this is the thing you guys got to understand, and and this is a hard thing for people to understand. Okay, these evil people, Letitia and the rest, they think they're saving us. Do you understand that? For some reason, they think Trump's a bad guy. I don't. I really don't understand why everyone doesn't love and support Donald Trump. Now, I want uh, an unrelated story here. Uh, by the way, your calls are, it is open phones. You're welcome to call in about any and everything on your mind. It is open phones on Friday, open MAGA Mike Friday at one 465 2631 1-888-465-2631. This is a local story um, right out of West Palm, right, right in our own neighborhood. A woman was attacked by a pit bull while walking her Yorkie. Um, a Miami woman was seen screaming in pain, urging police officers to get that witch, but, you know, it's the B word, I just can't say that, after both her arms were mauled by a pit bull while walking her Yorkie. The shocking aftermath of the March 11th attack in West Palm Beach was caught on camera and showed the woman bleeding and clutching her tiny dog to her chest while she spoke to police. Marbles was walking nearby uh, 7-Eleven when a pit bull named Diamond ran at her, latched onto her arm, and tried to get her little dog. The pit bull owner pulled the dog off her, ran around the corner with it in what she claimed was an attempt to calm the dog down. Police arrived, and uh, the woman was screaming at the officers, go get that witch, with a B meaning the pit bull. Uh, she was hospitalized with serious injuries to her arms, cuts to her body. Um, the pit bull was seized by animal control following the mauling. Um, she was walking towards the 7-Eleven 
when she saw a pit bull around 30 meters away that seemed to be off its leash. This story is in the UK press. That's why they're using meters. Uh, she told NBC Miami, I see a lady with a pit bull. I didn't pay attention because she would have, blah, blah, she got attacked. Um, pit bulls should not exist, okay? You know, um, I see people with them all the time. When I was a kid, uh, we had a cocker spaniel that got attacked by a pit bull, and the pits go for the necks of the dogs to kill them. And their teeth, now some of them are inbred and different breeds in them that change this, okay, and have changed this over the, over the years. But many pit bulls have, have teeth that are like hooks, where when they bite in, it's hard to get them off. And I remember we had a pit bull go after the co uh, our cocker spaniel, had the cocker spaniel's neck in its mouth, and my dad grabbed a two by four. He'd probably get arrested for this today, but this was like, you know, the 70s, early 80s. He took a two by four and just hit that pit bull on the back a couple times with it and finally let go and ran off. Um, when I see people walking around with pit bulls, I see, I see guys that have either no penis, a very small penis, or just they're just a jerk. I mean, why would you be walking? And, 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 and I see a lot of women with pit bulls. What is the purpose of having these vicious beasts? All right. They are, they are vicious. And in, in, in the dog fighting rings, they use the pit bulls. Okay. Uh, these are just deadly dogs. No one should breed them. I'm not saying that they should be exterminated. I'm an animal lover. I love dogs. Okay, my 17-year-old dog, I'm, I'm spending all kinds of money to keep her alive. She's not suffering. I wouldn't let her suffer, but I'm spending a lot of money keeping my 17-year-old dog alive and while she's doing well, you know, she's got her life back. But uh, they, they shouldn't breed them anymore. All pit bulls should be sterilized. They are terrible, deadly dogs that have a long history of not just attacking people but killing people and other animals. They're the worst. And um, I don't, these stories are in the news all the time. I don't bring them up too often, but uh, this one's in our own community and it, it's just vicious. If you're, if you're walking your, let me tell you, okay. And this is, this is the truth in my, you know, at least in my reality. Um, in Florida, pit bulls are more dangerous than alligators. Okay. And I know everybody thinks that, you know, alligators are dangerous. They're dangerous if you mess with them. But with a pit, you, you just have to be walking down the street and you're done. Okay? Gators don't mess with you unless you start messing with them or, you know, go into their little nest or something on the bank of the canal or the lake behind your house. All right. Our number, one 465 2631 It's a toll-free call no matter where you're listening. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. We'll be right back. What's that? Oh yeah. Oh okay. I was looking. I didn't see. Okay. That's why I didn't take the break right away. I didn't know what was going on. I was. Yeah. I gotta keep that. Like, I have that remembered to ask for the password and keep it oh. in my phone so I can take it next time. Because I tried calling Mike and it went to Oh, okay.
All right, we are back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Remember, Joe Thomas is offering free phone consultations. You know, that's an amazing offer he has. You know, he has over 30 years of experience in retirement planning. He's a five-time qualifying member of the Million Dollar Roundtable, which is achieved by less than 1% of all financial advisors in the world, and he's offering a free phone consultation with you. No matter where you're located, by the way, you just have to mention you heard about him on the radio and you know, talked to him about annuities. And uh, when I had uh, Joe Thomas on, on the program with me the other day, I was telling him everyone's situation is different. Everyone has something different they want to accomplish. Okay. Maybe somebody wants an annuity to leave to their wife or their kids or grandkids. Maybe they want income to subsidize their, their uh, retirement a little bit. You know, all kinds of, everybody has different purposes. So when you call uh, Joe Thomas, he's going to give you individualized uh, recommendations from his over 30 years of experience in this field based on what your needs and your goals are, all right? Give him a call. Take advantage of this no-charge phone consultation, 561-743-0999, 561-743-0999. If you missed the number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com, jupiterjoe.com. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? PJ from Broward. Hey, PJ. What's up? Hey, um, you know, you were just talking about the borders uh, control and everything. You know, uh, I don't take any politicians seriously unless, you know what the key word for me is? I've got to hear mm. legal. I don't know. You notice how the Democrats, uh, like yeah. Biden, accidentally said the word illegal? Oh, my God. It was like, I mean, they forgot about... It was It was like when Cain, who was running with Hillary, as her vice, said that uh, all lives matter, and he didn't say just black lives, and, they, and he had to apologize. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you know what? I'm doing... I was doing a... You know, I, I, I'm on this advice, just related to this. Um, you know, I was like, uh, I'm hoping that... I'm really hoping that Trump picks this uh, J.D. Vance for vice president. Because the more I, the more I find to read up on him and learn about him, the better I like it. Because you know, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, he's leaning towards Tim Scott." You know what? Tim Scott's a real nice guy. He's a great senator, but I don't think he really takes. You know, he, he's treating this election like it's just another election in a long chain of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's it's not. It's a very special. I don't think. I don't think he's. Cons I don't think he's. Pro None of us know. No one knows. But I don't think it's. I don't think he's considering Tim Scott. I think he. I think people were talking about that in the Trump orbit because the South Carolina primary was coming up, and he's the senator from South Carolina, and it helped in South Carolina. Um, I, I read a story today that Marco Rubio is on the list. You cannot have the president and vice president from the same state. If they do, they cannot get the um, the electoral. Uh, the electors cannot. The way it works. Uh, I told you that. Yeah, I've been yeah, I've been telling people, and but people talk about like it can be Byron Donalds. Or the electors um, cannot vote; they have to vote for both president and vice president. They can't vote for two people from the same state, and and this is not Connecticut or Rhode Island. We got a lot of electoral votes. It would it would be a problem. We'd lose. We'd lose. Yeah, but I, I was the guy that remember about a year or so, like over a year ago. I I don't, but I'll I'll take your word for it. Oh, and also, here's the thing. So I'm, I'm researching. In fact, I'm going to do a, a video about Vance today because he gave an hour-long speech recently on the border crisis in the Senate. And in one hour, I actually counted it up. Uh, he, he said the word illegal 40 times in an hour. Yeah. Which, which to me, means he's serious. And uh, you, know, you know how I know somebody is completely unserious about the border? Mm. They use the term comprehensive. Oh, immigrant. Or migrants. Yeah, no, comprehensive immigration. Oh, uh, reform. Is it? Reform. That's it, that's it. That means amnesty. That means amnesty. What they really should do, you know, all these pit bulls that are attacking people like this lady in West Palm, send them to the southern border. Yeah. But, you know, here, here's the thing about this coming into this election. I, I hope we hear more about it. But, actually, you know, a lot of people don't realize we actually 
supposedly there's a, a border czar. She had one mission. Vice President Harris had one important mission, of being the border czar. And what happened with that? It was complete failure. Mm. Then she came up. She came up with all these excuses. She said, no, no, no. I'm I'm the I'm the border czar. I'm not that border. I'm I'm like for the. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Central America thing or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> yeah. Are you packing for the cruise yet? Well, it's 36 days. I'm already checked in and, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Going. Yeah. So it's 30, you know, here's the deal from February 15th till now, uh, if you go back to that period of time, it's the same period of time until when the embarkation day. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I know, I know. I can't wait. I'm look. I need the vacation. And I'm gonna find out what a mint julep tastes like. I had a mint julep on one of the cruises. I don't remember what it taste tasted like, other than it tasted good. I do remember saying that. But I'd had a lot to drink before that, so everything probably would have tasted good at that point. Yeah, because on the last day of my uh, the, the last year's cruise. Um, there was a guy, he, he, he took a swig of the uh, mint ju- uh, drink, and I, he went, oh, my God, this is the most yeah, it's good drink I ever had. I said, what is it? What is it? Mint julep. I said, i got to try it. And then I forgot to try it because it was the last day of the cruise, and then now i got to try it. Yeah. All right, take care. Now, if you guys see my um, tour of the ship on my YouTube channel, you get to see my cabin, which is uh, pre- the only time you get to see it is on that video. Um, when we do go on the cruise, you know, PJ is going on the cruise, too, of course. He goes on our cruises. Um, if, if you are in our group, make sure that you go on the app or the Celebrity Cruise website and uh, sign up for your boarding time. You have to pick a boarding time. It used to be everybody showed up, right? And now you pick a boarding time. And it's really cool because there's no crowd there. You just walk onto the ship. Now, I always pick the first one, okay? But those are filled up by now probably. I always pick the first one because the moment you get on the cruise, everything, everything starts, Right? You start to get all the benefits of it. So, you know, anyway. All right. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, is it raining?
By the way, guys, don't forget, order your Mighty Maga Lion. There's a link in the description of the video. There's, and if you're watching live, there's a link pinned to the top of the chat. This is the only Trump-inspired merchandise wearing the Maga hat. If you order more than one, you get a discount. You can either click the link in the description of the video, the, click the link pinned to the top of the chat, or go to MightyMagaLion.com and order yours. MightyMagaLion.com. These are available exclusively through me, cute and cuddly, just like Trump. Order yours, MightyMagaLion.com. If you order during the live show today, your Mighty Maga Lion will be mailed today. <clears throat> That's right. <clears throat> Here we go. Greg, celebrating 47. All right, we're back. It is open phones on Fridays. Open Maga Mike Friday. Any and everything on your mind is fair game on Friday's show. Our number, 1-888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brian. It's Craig. Oh, hey, Greg. What's up? You know, listen, obviously every day you're discussing the border because it is the number one issue facing in America. But I want to answer this question. Why did the Republicans shoot down that border bill that would have increased border funding and all, and more officers and also would have would have helped at least somewhat resolve the problem. But the Republican shot was supported by a top uh, officer, one of the security border officers. Mm -hmm. He supported it. Why did the Republicans go against it? Okay. They went against it for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, it was legalizing illegal immigration. In fact, that, that bill said that there were so many thousands per day that would be allowed to come in without any interference. That's, that's one main reason. I know research this. I'll get back. Now research it. You're telling me that bill, the bill Burbage said, we're going to let how many thousands, Brian? I don't, I don't, re I don't remember the number of people. It was, it was more than one. I don't remember the exact number. We just lost all the phones, Mike. All the phones just went dead. So, all the, yeah. I can hear the call. I, hold on, hold on, Greg. We got to take a call. Let me, let me finish talking to Greg first, but um, I can't take any more calls after Greg because the phone's down. Okay. We lost, we lost our phone connection. I can still talk to you because you're on, but everybody else on hold, you'll have to hang in there. All right, go ahead, Greg. Back to the uh, dual. Yes. 
Good luck. Good luck with the um, phones. But here, listen. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I believe it was three to five thousand a day. Research it. It shouldn't take long to pick it up. There's no. There's no way. Even if you find it, that you'll call in and say, Brian, you were right. You that three to five thousand could come in. Mm -hmm. You'll never. You'll never do that. But the, but, the, but, but the deal is, it doesn't matter if you have 10 million border agents at the border if they're not keeping them on the other side of it. If you, have, if, you, if you have thousands of more agents and their job is to just process these illegals and set them up in this country, what good is that? Was it three to 5,000 a day, a month, a year? All right, they're back. Yeah, um, it was a day. I don't believe that for one second. I, I know, I know, it's hard to believe. But it doesn't matter if it, even if it was even if it was one person a year, it'd be wrong. But yeah, I know it's hard. even you can't. But I know it's tough to believe. But that's the way it is. Find out. I will call you back on mm -hmm. it. Tell you also with Trump. You, you wonder why some people are not enamored and infatuated with Trump and think he's the greatest president ever. And I talk to a lot of people about politics in a reasonable fashion. They like Trump's policies, no doubt about it. They saw what happened with their economy, the border. They like it. It's just like Trump's comments annoy them. Like that latest comment, which you never talked about. I was waiting for you to bring it up, where he says, if you vote Democrat, you hate your, and by the word, the word we love to use, hate your religion and hate Israel. Yeah, I played that the other day on the air. I'll, I'll see if I, if I still have it, I'll play it again. Uh, later, but, but he, he was, yeah, Jews that support the Democrats are like Jews for Hitler. The Democrats are giving uh, support to the Hamas terrorist that invaded and kidnapped and raped all those uh, Israeli girls. Okay, I mean, yeah, so if you support, if you, if you are a Jew who's supporting the Democrats, you are supporting terrorism against the Israeli people, yeah. That means you're a traitor. Do you hate your Jewish faith? Uh, Judaism isn't a faith. No, I'm sorry. I know what it's a nationality. I know. No, it's not a na Judaism's not a nationality either. I mean, it's a religion, but it's a it's a religion, and you're born a Jew. I mean, you can convert, but you're born a Jew. But what is it? I told you, it's a religion. Okay. All right, but listen, those comments and not that not necessarily that one and others turn off people to Trump. If he would just be more conservative in his speech. Oh, so, so, so you mean to tell me that if Trump starts supporting Hamas, these people will, will like him? No, you never support him. I'm just saying when you come out... The Democrats, the Democrats are giving... Listen, we fund Iran, right? Biden funds Iran. Iran gives weapons and money to the terrorist that attacked Israel, Hamas. So if you support the Democrats, you are supporting continued... Support of Hamas. What kind of Jew supports Nazis? Why didn't Trump just simply say that? Instead that's of what he said. Puts in the hate word and that has the blood. Bed. Listen, 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 listen. I know that you have a problem with manly men and Trump's a man's man. And, and a lot of guys have daddy issues or something. I don't know. You know what? You know what? That's pathetic. We're having an actually intelligent. Now, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people like you, you don't like Trump for whatever bizarre dysfunction, and you're always, and you you're always please, and you're always looking for excuses to justify your open hatred of the man. I, I think you admire Trump so much is because he's like a foot taller than you. Yeah. Do you wear high heels when you go see him? No, I, I don't wear high heels, no. I did buy new shoes. When I, when I went to meet him last time, I did buy new shoes with a new suit, even new socks. I even wore new underwear, actually. I bought new everything. New shirt. New, uh, I went to the men's warehouse and bought a suit. What, 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 what do you want to laugh at me about that, that I shop at men's warehouse? Go ahead. I don't, I, listen, I'm a guy. I don't know what brand. I go to the men's warehouse. They measure me. I tell them I need a black suit. Okay, because I'm going to meet the president, and uh, they give it to me. I'm not a girl. I don't know what 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 are you wearing? Are you straight? What what do you mean? What am I wearing? I don't know. I went to the men's warehouse and bought a suit. I don't know. Is it a brand or is men's warehouse its own brand? I don't know. All right, he hung up. I guess he. I guess when he was asking what I who I was wearing, 
He got nervous. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, good morning. It's Lisa in Texas. Hey, Lisa. Hey, wow. I can't believe I was on right before Craig. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, Greg, too. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, listen, this, your thumbnail was talking about millionaires bailing out. Trump. Billionaires. <laughs> yeah, I... I did, did I miss that part? So no, no, I've been talking about it throughout the show. There, there, are several, there are several billionaires, including the founder of the Home Depot, who are uh, having a fundraiser to raise money to, amongst themselves to pay off the, uh, the bond. John Paulson's another, you know, John Paulson's one of them. You know, he's, he's the first one to come out, yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. That's, you know, thank God somebody's doing something. Mm -hmm. and, and what about, you know, them coming after him, Letitia James and all this, and then I, uh, there was some blurb about, I don't know, there, somebody, she's in trouble for something. I don't know. I didn't catch it all. But mm. uh, how, do we, how do we, as people, like, get the Supreme Court involved with stopping all of this stuff? How, how do we, the people, stop? these insane Democrats from turning our country. The, the, um, the only thing that we can do is vote Trump in in November. That's all we can do. That's, that's all we can do. And um, well, actually, if you count the primaries, I've already voted for him two, five times. This will be my sixth time in November voting for President Trump. Now, what do you think Greg Tu's obsession with? He, he asked me what he asked me who I was wearing. What brand? What what? I've never heard a man ask another man what brand of suit they're wearing. That's that's like that's like that's like a woman's question, isn't it? Yeah, and I think he was just trying to make fun. I mean, I don't even know um, what brand pants I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing jeans. I don't know if they're Levi's or old name. My wife buys my clothes, guys, like most married guys, okay? I don't know what, you know, what, what does that mean? I, you know, I told my, you know, my, I told my wife, I said, I'm, you know, I was going to wear my old suit, and my wife said, you can't wear that suit to meet the president. That suit's too out of style. We, you got to get a new suit. Yes, she was right. Yes. All right. I appreciate the call. Oh, me too. I got, you know, you know, I, I, the most exciting part though, is when I got to call President Trump to, to him, Mr. President, that was pretty cool. That's really cool. Right. Isn't that cool? Mr. President. And it's like real, you know? Oh my gosh. That's so fantastic. Oh, I know. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Yeah. Plus that 20, plus that $24,000 autographed MAGA hat that I have thanks to that visit. All right. Um, our number is one 465 2631 I'm looking for that clip. It was, you know, uh, what Trump said about Jews and Israel, he was, um, I played it a few days ago on the show. I'll look for it during the break. But, uh, you know, I love all these people who say, if Trump only did this or only said that, you know, we'd like him and support him. These people all hate him. And there's nothing that President Trump can say or do that is going to make them uh, approve of him. They're always looking for a justification for the range. It was, he was talking to Sebastian Gorka when he made that comment. I'll find it. I know I got it on my Twitter somewhere because I played it on the show a couple days ago. All right. Um, let's take our break. We'll be back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve King Show. Brian Craig here with a question for seniors and those who care about them. How would you like to have instant access to a healthcare advocate at the touch of a button? Would that make life easier for you? You can with I Will Huh? Are the phones back? Because there's like this line here looks kind of weird. Okay, now it's back. Okay. I just, I am. Um, for some reason, I think it's the weather that's messing around with the, the connection because the internet went out for a second too. That, that's probably what it was because they're connected to the internet. No, they're back now. Okay.
When's he going to call in? Uh, I'm going to call him back. Let's try to do it going into the top. If he can. Okay. Yeah, if we could do it going into the top or coming out of the top. Yeah. Okay. Either way. All right, we are back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. Remember, free shipping continues at mypillow.com site wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E. Uh, there, and plus, you get the special deal. You, you can save so much money at mypillow.com, but you know, the free shipping is, is also a substantial savings on the savings they already have. Uh, and don't forget the $25 extravaganza. On some of my favorite MyPillow products, the six-piece towel set, which everyone should have, it's absolutely amazing, 25 bucks. The MyPillow pet bed, 25 bucks, with our promo code Kane, of course. Uh, the Giza pillows, upscale MyPillow, 25 bucks, whole bunch more. Uh, and free shipping site-wide, no matter how large, no matter how small, no matter how light, no matter how heavy your order, free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. I am going to comment on the two issues, though, that uh, Greg, too, brought up. And I would have done this if he uh, – I, I can't say he hung up because we did have phone problems and some callers were disconnected. So he may have been – you know, I don't want to accuse him of hanging. I think he hung up, but he may not have. Um, first, he said the border issue. Why they – we already have everything in place to protect the border. The problem is they're not doing it. They're not using the resources they already have. We don't even – the purpose for more legislation is – for um, the powers that be like Biden to steal more money from the government. For example, Biden wanted to put some type of machinery at the southern border that would detect uh, fentanyl or something. And I imagine those machines cost over $100,000 each. Okay, so there was a, it was a way for them to steal more money for donors. And, and the big guy always gets 10%. Um, the thing about Israel, I'm going to play the audio from CNN on that because this is – you know, this this is one of those things. Um, this country um, has never had a president that was as supportive as Israel as President Trump. He's the one who moved the embassy to the capital of Israel, where it was not. Other presidents had promised to do it, and they didn't. And uh, there's a long history of liberal Jews supporting terrorists. We During the days of Arafat, we used to have uh, in the last days of Arafat, the Israelis had him under siege in his headquarters with the power off. And we would have guests that were inside the building with Arafat who were like American human shields trying to protect Arafat that were Jews. And we would have them on the phone. You guys remember that? They, would, they were as close, let me tell you, they were as close to Arafat as I am to Mike the board op right now. And we'd have them on the phone. And they were Jews. So that's what you're dealing with, okay? Liberal Jews have a long history of supporting terrorists that are trying to finish what Hitler started. So this is uh, Jake Tapper uh, talking, and he's going to share Trump's comments. Sebastian, the great Sebastian Gorka was interviewing President Trump. Donald Trump showing nothing, not even one's faith, is off limits in 2024. 
if you're an American Jew who votes for Democrats, Donald Trump says, you hate your own religion and you hate Israel and you should be ashamed of Isn't it interesting how, I, ju- I didn't think about this till now, but Greg too used like the exact same words as Jake Tapper. I guess they got the same talking points. Yourself. We should note, American Jews vote Democratic roughly 70% of the time. I know, it's embarrassing. Jews that Donald Trump just attacked. Yeah, that uh, yeah, that didn't attack, exposed. You know, we have a large Jewish population in South Florida. And um, anyone who's who's been involved, you know, liberal Jews are the majority of Jews. That's absolutely correct. But you know what, though? There aren't as many liberal Jews as there used to be since Trump came down the escalator. A former Trump White House aide, Sebastian Gorka, asked Trump about <clears throat> criticism that prominent Democrats, including President Biden and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, have aimed at Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Take a listen. Why do the Democrats hate Bibi Netanyahu? I actually think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate it. I think they hate Israel. And the Democrat Party hates Israel. Any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion, they hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves because Israel would be destroyed. It's a fairly shocking thing for a presidential candidate to say about any... Yeah, the truth. But about Jews at this time of rising anti-Semitism... Oh, I love how he says that. About Jews? Did you hear how Jake Tapper says that? He says it in kind of a weird way. You know, yeah. And President Trump was spot on and right on the money, as always, with those comments. And, you know, it's it's so interesting to me how they're trying to paint him as anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, anti-Israeli. You know, not only are we funding the terrorists that are killing Jews, kidnapping Jews, raping Jews, because we, you know, Biden, that's us. Biden, Obama started it, fund Iran, and they don't just fund Iran by the money they send them. They fund Iran by raising gas prices. Remember, Iran, like Russia, was on the verge of just complete bankruptcy because Iran is an oil economy, and President Trump had oil so low there wasn't much profit on it. So they didn't have money for terrorism. So when the gas prices go up, it benefits the terrorists that are attacking Israel. So if you're supporting Biden, you're supporting Hamas. That's right. As an example of this, okay, um, Jake Tapper, isn't Jake Tapper Jewish? And Steve and I were talking about this on the program the other day. There is an endless discussion of how the Holocaust happened. College classes, lectures, books, researchers. How, how was Hitler allowed to gain power? And we see how the Holocaust happened every day. Because in this country, liberal Jews support Democrats that are supporting terrorists, and they always have, okay? And it's disgusting, it's scary, it's wrong. And President Trump, yeah, see, even the little light bulb over my head went off. Do you hear that? Because I was right. No, I got a text message and I have my computer hooked up to the uh, pot going out over the air. Um, But it was the perfect timing when I made a point, ding, Um, and so Jake Tapper, I, I, I'm pretty sure Jake Tapper's a Jew. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's Jewish. And if he is, he is proving Donald Trump to be right again. You know, when, when President Trump moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, that's a big deal. You know, the capital of Israel is Jerusalem and the embassy was in Tel Aviv. Why do you think that is? The, the reason that the embassy was in Tel Aviv is because they didn't want to offend the Muslims. I've got news for you. The Muslims are always pissed off at something, okay? Nothing you, you know. And that's, that's a textbook example of appeasing the Nazis, appeasing the terrorists. 
if you put, if the reason they didn't have the capital in Jerusalem, they didn't want to piss off the terrorists. Well, they're always pissed off. That's what the terrorists. And it was it was amazing. Uh, uh, George W. Bush said he'd move the embassy. Never did. Had no had no intention. Remember when President Trump had the embassy moved? He ordered it, the, and then they came to him to build a new embassy. And it was going to take ten years to build this fortress embassy, so it'd have to stay in Tel Aviv. And he says, no, don't we have a building there? So they found some, some building, and they, that's the embassy that was already there. And the reason they put that government 10-year plan in place was to put it off knowing that the next president would stop it. So, no, President Trump is right. If you support Israel, you cannot vote Democrat. And by the way, that doesn't go for just Jews. You can't be a Christian and vote Democrat either. Not a, not, a, not a Christian in good standing. How can you vote Democrat if you're pro-life? All right? All right, let's, um, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling to tell you that some time ago, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh. You were listening to Rush Limbaugh, yes. Yeah. Rush Limbaugh had um, Jeremiah Wright, the, uh, the, um, the mentor for, for Obama. Uh huh. I I really I, I'm really having a hard time understanding. You. I know you're I know you're not doing you're not you know you're not well. So I'm not, you know, but I, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Rush Limbaugh told you what about Obama? I've only got like 15 seconds. Obama was running for president. Yes. Obama was in Jeremiah right? That's death to America and death to Israel. That's true. Yes, Jeremiah Wright. That's absolutely correct. Hey, listen, I got to run for the break, but uh, appreciate the call. All right, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. I'm Brian Craig. We'll be back right after this. WSFS 104. Hey, Mike, is, um, is, is the Comrex connected? Because Steve said he's not hearing anything. Barry just called in, but then he hung up, so you had to call him back. But Steve said he's not hearing anything. Okay. Let me see. Let me see now. Steve, can you... Hold on, let me try. Steve, are you there? No, I don't think they can hear. Ask him to recommit. Yeah. But if Barry hung up, unless it just disconnected, then there's a problem. They're hearing the commercial. Okay. Okay. All right. Steve, can you hear me? Steve, can you hear me? Hey, Barry, it's Mike. This is from uh, Steve Kane Show. Perfect. I'm on here. Put your hold and we'll get to you when we come right off the top, okay? Steve, are you there? Yeah. Uh, okay, we got uh, you now. We got. Okay, what are you hearing? I'm hearing you. Okay, do you hear anything else? Yeah, I hear the traffic in the back. Okay, I'm going to turn the traffic and new. I'm going to turn the commercials off. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, we're good to go. Okay. That's what I was thinking about. Oh, well, I'm going to probably yeah. be hearing the, the stuff on the back. Where? Oh, okay. Mm hmm.
Okay, I'm going to get to the details of the billionaires and Trump after the break. All right. Now, uh, Steve joining us. Hey, Steve. Okay. Okay. Now, um, well, I don't know. Glorious. I don't know. The rain will be coming soon. Um, now, I'm going to get into the details in a few minutes um, about the billionaires who are going to bail out Trump from uh, Letitia in New York. But first, we're going to talk about how you can set up your family so they don't run into financial trouble when you're gone. And that's by... Uh, Talking to Attorney Barry Siegel from the Siegel Law Group. Attorney Barry Siegel, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Great, great. What do you have for us today? Well, we did our uh, planning workshop yesterday in our Berkeley office. And uh, afterwards, uh, one of the attendees, this uh, lady, comes up to me and starts to tell me the story about uh, what happened with her. Uh, she was married, and it was a... Second marriage, she didn't have children, uh, the husband uh, does, and she was very close with them and everything was great. Uh, husband was not interested or never got around to doing any planning, even though she kept wanting to do that. Never did. He ended up passing away a couple of years ago. And what ended up ensuing was not what any of us would want to have happen. Uh, instead of having harmony in the, in the, in the family, uh, his children and his wife ended up having to deal with lawyers and going to court and fighting, and it was unclear how things were, were left. He just left a mess behind, and uh, she ended up losing a lot of what, uh, wow. what they had. And, uh, you know, so, you know, for guys out there, if, if you don't want to um, leave a mess behind, uh, leave your uh, wife or your, your, your widowed uh, spouse uh, in a bad position and also uh, leave behind disharmony in your life, uh, make sure that you get things taken care of and get your planning set up so that this does not happen to you. Absolutely. And, and it can all, it can happen. And it, I tell you, it's a very easy process for you because attorney Barry Siegel and his team at the Siegel Law uh, Group uh, it just have everything down and it will go very smooth for you. They do all the hard lifting for you. And, uh, when when people pass and everything is in chaos and nothing's left, it can get really nasty with families too. I mean, you know, personality, you, you get to see the real personalities, right, when the money's involved. It's always a no-charge consultation with, uh, with the Siegel Law Group when you tell them you heard Attorney Barry Siegel on the program. You can find them online at SiegelLawGroup.com, SiegelLawGroup.com, or call toll-free 855-FLA-3782. 855-FLA-3782. All right, Attorney Barry Siegel, we'll talk next week. All right, thank you, Brian. All right, take care, take care. All right, now, Steve, I've been saving this for you. Um, no, no, it's not, no, but I, you know. No, well, I mean, I, no, I mean, it's not like, I'm not giving you a Valentine, but I wanted to, I wanted to go, I didn't want to have to go through this more than once. Um the, the corrupt Letitia James, who I, I, I started this show today 
Steve, she has, not only is her net worth $15 million, she has uh, millions of dollars in cash sitting in bank accounts. Uh, Letitia James, she's, her net worth is $15 million, and she has millions of dollars um, in, a, in, in a bank account. Uh, well, that's what I'm asking. Um, but I, I have an update on how Trump's going to deal with it. But before I get to that, I want to go, I want to recap what she's got, okay? Because this is insane. She has worked her entire life for government. She has no ex-husband, no husband. She doesn't have kids, and she has no, you know, family wealth. You know, Fannie Willis, her her dad's a big connected Black Panther lawyer, so she comes from a, a wealthy family, okay? Not Letitia. Um, she's done nothing, but she started as a public defender, and she's done nothing but work for the government. Listen to this, Steve, okay? Uh, and this is just what we know about. Letitia James, okay, her net worth is $15 million. Letitia James is big into real estate, Steve, including a luxurious townhouse in the Tribeca District in Manhattan that she purchased for $420,000. She has a historic brownstone in Harlem that she purchased for $210,000. She has a duplex in the Bronx, most recently valued at $850,000, okay? Um, according to, uh, you know, and because she's a public official, they have to do financial disclosures. So all this stuff is out there for everyone. Um, the question is, how did she acquire it? Uh, according to documents, um, she has multiple bank accounts with lots of money in them. She has an account at Chase Bank. With a, with a balance of $850,000, she has a savings account at Bank of America that has $1.5 million in it. That's on top of her real estate assets, so she has over $2 million in cash in the bank. Um, she um, has uh, ownership in seven real estate properties. Um, she, uh, and uh, uh, let's see here, her investment portfolio um, in, is, a, is valued at $2.6 million in her investment portfolio. So she's got a lot of money for someone that's worked for the city and state of New York her whole life. It, it's, it's, people should be asking, how'd she come up with so much money? And, and, and she has a particular interest in criminalizing people's wealth. People should, maybe she needs to be looked at. I, I, maybe she, listen... If Letitia James made this money legitimately, I would like to know because I'd like to be able to duplicate what she did. But I would imagine it's through crooked dealings, wouldn't you? I mean, how can somebody that works for the government their whole life? Right. The public record? Well, we don't know how she made it. We know what she has, but we don't know how she got it. You understand what I mean? Yes. So the, the public, her assets and her wealth our public record, but we don't know how she got it. These are just on the financial disclosures because she runs for public office. Okay, so Letitia is getting ready to start seizing Trump property, and billionaire donors, billionaire MAGA people, are, uh, uh, and some new billionaire MAGA people are joining forces to bail out uh, Trump from this situation. So, you know, he doesn't have to start selling off his assets. And, yeah, now this I was saving till you came on because I didn't want to go through this twice. And this is, the, 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 what I'm about to get into are the billionaires joining forces for Trump. And don't let the press tell you that Trump hasn't been able to secure a bond because he's a risk. You know, he is under federal protection 24 hours a day, Federal Secret Service, no matter where he goes. I mean, he's, you know, he's not going to flee. He can't. Secret Service have him. Um, the, 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 the dangers of, of Letitia seizing this property is you know what they'll do, Steve. They'll, they'll they, they want to humiliate him. So they'll tear it down, burn it down. They'll do, it'll become a spectacle. So listen to this. This is in the New York Post, okay? This is yesterday's New York Post if you have it, okay? There's going to be a fundraiser of billionaires to raise money to pay off the half a billion dollars that Letitia. Okay, they're going to pay 800 
$14,600 each at this massive fundraiser of billionaires. Attendees include, uh, and these are all billionaires, include, but there's many others, Woody Johnson, Todd Ricketts, Steve Wynn. Okay, also on the list, hedge fund billionaire Robert Mercer. Uh, this is being organized by hedge funder John Paulson. Uh, the event's going to be right here in Palm Beach. Uh, others in attendance will be Harold Hamm, he was uh, Secretary of Commerce, Wilbert Ross, Kelly Lawfer, uh, Jeff Spreacher, John Katsimatidis, Howard Lutnick, Robert Bigelow, and Linda McMahon. And these are just a, a handful of people. Uh, and they're going to be paying eight hundred fourteen thousand six hundred, many more, and some much more than that, to attend this fundraising event to raise money to go towards uh, this half a billion that Latif. The reason he hasn't been able to secure a bond are two reasons. One, no, no, no one trusts Letitia to give the money back. Right? She'll find some way to keep it. Um, but you know, now I'll throw this out to the audience. I have not looked this up, but my recollection is that Bernie Madoff only had to come up with a $10 million bond. And he was responsible for how much money? <laughs> how much money did he steal? Billions? Okay. There's never been a, a, a fine on an individual anywhere close to this. I mean, this is like big tobacco settlement kind of things they got against him. Okay, I mean, it's, it's it's everyone knows he did nothing wrong. It's unconstitutional, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the question is, will Donald Trump accept this or does he want her to seize something for symbolism? Does he want to sell? Some? I don't know. But I do know this. We have mega billionaires who are prepared to come to the rescue. You know, and and that. that yeah. Yeah. So. You know, the bottom one of the problem is. I don't know. I mean, Steve, you know these, you know, Letitia James, she might find some excuse not to take the check. You know what I mean? I mean, this woman, she's foaming at the mouth. She doesn't, she doesn't want money from somewhere else. She wants his property or empty out his bank account. You understand what I mean? This is not what Letitia wants. So I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. People need to start asking the question of how she obtained so much money working for the government her whole life in New York. I mean, that's, if she, if she made it legitimately, fine. Let's find out. I mean, it's possible. Wayne Huizinga was a self-made billionaire here in Florida. The only thing that's public record are what her assets are. We don't know how she got them. Well, no, I'm, you know, no, it's just the way it is. She has to list her assets when she ran for attorney general. So, you know, so you got that info. But how she amassed it, we don't know. Maybe it's available in the records. I don't know. But it would take somebody to investigate it. I can't investigate it. You know, I don't have any resources. I'm not in New York. You know, there are people who are. They went to all the trouble to raise this money and they... Well, they gave her... They, somebody, either, either Letitia James is just a brilliant businesswoman or she's a crook, right? And it shouldn't be too hard to figure out which is which. And I think we all kind of know. All right, let's take our first break of the last hour. It is Friday. Of course, that means open phones, open MAGA mic Friday. Any and everything on your mind is fair game on Friday show. You're not limited to the topics that we bring up. Our number is toll free, one 465 2631. 888 465 2631. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve is here. I'm Brian. We'll be right back. Don't stay on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve Kane Show live on air now. 
hear his experience with Dr. Gupta. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM. The Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM. Here is in Boca on 95.3 FM. Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM. And All right, we're back. I was just listening to the recorded commercial with John from Lighthouse Medical Center in, in Pompano. You know, Lighthouse Medical Center, th this, is, this is all we really need to say and then give out the number. Lighthouse Medical Center, they have been in practice with the same family of physicians in Pompano for 75 years. I mean, that's amazing. They're founding, and this is the same family. They, they, I, I, I highlight this because I think it's, you know, it, it says so much about the practice. This, the same family for 75 years, this isn't a practice that's been sold a dozen times and they kept the number. This is a founding family of Pompano, a founding family of Broward. And my guess is, I, I, I've not checked this out to confirm it, but my guess is it's the, it's the longest uh, serving medical practice with the same family of physicians in Broward County. Easy. Hands got to be. Um, but they, they do a lot of great work over there. We especially highlight what they do for those that suffer with neuropathy like you used to do, Steve. And, you know, um, neuropathy is living torture. If they gave neuropathy to the Al-Qaeda detainees in Guantanamo Bay, they would have spilled all their guts. They would have sung like canaries. It's that bad. It's worse than waterboarding, okay? It's worse than waterboarding. It makes life unbearable. And their treatment works. I know it works because I've seen it with you, Steve, and many of our listeners, uh, especially that guy that came to um, uh, Wings Plus. I mean, this guy, Steve, I... I cannot remember. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. I can't remember your name, sir. I wouldn't even mention it if Steve didn't bring it up and ask me. But you, he, I mean, I, I felt like uh, the guy was like in tears. He was so grateful. He wouldn't have been there if it were not. So it, it's a free consultation with Lighthouse Medical Center. Call them. If you have a family member suffering from neuropathy, set the appointment up for them, okay? 754-222-6642. 754-222-6642 and online, lighthousemedicalcenter.com. Okay, so um, did you see this attack on the southern border yesterday? 
Zoom out of it. Oh my goodness, Steve! It was it was like the days of of. Uh, let me let me read through this. Um, it's it's really alarming. The Texas National Guard fell um, to the invaders. New York Post: uh, A group of over a hundred, they say migrants. I call them illegal invaders. Uh, attempted to enter the U.S. illegally by rushing a border wall Thursday. Now, they call this a border wall. It was not the Great Wall of Trump. It was uh, barbed wire and razor wire. Uh, They broke through razor wire. They knocked over guards. Um, The New York Post reporter witnessed 600 illegals amassing on the border, and they're uh, they're calling this the spring surge. Remember, the surge, that that was in Iraq, when we were fighting in Iraq. Right, the surge. I mean, they're they're describing it as a, as a, they call it the spring surge of of they say migrants, but I say illegal invaders. The spring surge of illegals arriving and hoping to gain access to the U.S. The Texas National Guard were attempting to organize them into smaller groups, but the situation grew tense after some women and children were separated from adult males by the guardsmen. Also, oh, look at this. They're blaming the Texas National Guard for the attack on the southern border, not the invaders. Um, a group of men with hoodies, gloves, and winter jackets, you know, and the reason they wear the gloves and the winter jackets is protection from the razor wire. That's correct. Um, let's see. I lost my um, track. Okay. Um, they were mostly single men in hoodies, gloves, and winter jackets. They could be seen pulling fencing away and dashing through the razor wire as a group of, of Texas guardsmen formed a, de- a defensive position. The, the Texas National Guardsmen uh, held their rifles firmly, stood their ground in front of the illegals who heavily outnumbered them. So they didn't run. They were, they were standing their ground. A few put their hands directly on the illegals to keep them back in response to being pushed as the scene became louder and more chaotic. In video, you can see um, some putting their hands up to surrender, but second later, uh, seconds later, others scrambled through, with some coming through the guard's legs and knocking the guards out of the way. I mean, they were outnumbered 100 to 1, man. The group of illegals then scrambled to the border gate and started to shout at the guardsmen on the other side. We have women and children... We're hungry, uh, they were screaming. It's unclear whether they were screaming that in English or Spanish. Um, Help, help, help their kids, they were screaming at the guardsmen. More Texas National Guardsmen then quickly moved in to secure the area. One guard was heard saying, get the F back. Notice this whole article, this is the New York Post. The guardsmen are being made the negative through this whole article, right? Um, uh, uh, let's see here. They amassed in the area, uh, known as gate 36 located next to the highway in El Paso. They were pushed back to Mexico. Some were arrested. Uh, how many of them got through by the way, of, of these men who rushed the border, how many got, got through? And, you know, the, the border is, I was talking earlier, Steve, you know, What's going on at the border is a 9-11-like event, except we don't have that unity that we had after 9-11. Americans are dying every day because of this. I mean, it's, it's really bad. And, you know, I was talking about two weeks ago, there was a, there's a measles outbreak down in your neck of the woods um, in Broward. And I was saying this is because the illegals and, and people are, oh, no, it's for those, those soccer moms that don't get their kids vaccinated. Well, it was reported last week that they traced the measles to one of the centers that keeps illegals, okay? Now I'm reading, um, see, the illegals bring with them old things that we wiped out in this country, right? Um, There's a leprosy outbreak in Florida. Leprosy. I mean, mean, how does a doctor even diagnose that? They've never seen it. They, They probably learned about it in school briefly or, you know, I mean... You know, and it's in Central Florida, uh, the Orlando. That that area where the leprosy outbreak was it was DeSantis says it isn't anymore, but it's still run by Democrats. It was a sanctuary city. the 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 reason that there's a leprosy outbreak in Central Florida is because that's the community taking in the illegals that they're that that Biden's bringing here. 
So they're bringing measles, which we've pretty much eradicated. I mean, you may have had measles, Steve. I never had measles. My daughter never had measles. My wife never had measles. We've pretty much gotten rid of measles. No one's had measles since like the 50s. Now they're back. Leprosy. Um, do you know, Steve, I, I, I was reading that in other parts of the country, the plague is being detected. The plague. I thought that went out uh, with uh, the Renaissance, but it's, it's back. And, you know, these old diseases, illnesses, and conditions that we've wiped out in our, in our first world society are being brought in. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Brian? Yes. Oh, yeah, I got a question. How come they're not using tear gas? That would be the best way to, to protect themselves. My guess, uh, listen, because of Kent State. Really? You got, they're going that far back because they can't stay with illegals? Well, no, Ken, you know, be, my guess is, is that there's no bullets in the gun. I was talking to call about this earlier. The guardsmen probably have guns with no bullets, and they're probably, and they're probably very uh, uh, restricted on what they can do. But it seems like tear gas would be the best thing. You're not killing anybody. You're just protecting no, they can't. They're, they're, they're very, if, if one of these guardsmen would have taken the rifle butt and hit one of these illegals in the head, the guardsmen would be in jail today. Right, I agree with that. That's, so, you know. That's why you use tear gas. You don't no, you can't. They're, not, they're probably not allowed to. You know, and, you know, in this day and age, so, oh, somebody had an allergic reaction and they died. Guardsmen arrested. You think I'm kidding? No, I'm not. You know, listen, even at Kent State, remember the students at Kent State attacked those guardsmen. The guardsmen were defending themselves at Kent State from an attack by those hippies. And, and look, and you, not to the Democrats, they're, they're called newcomers. Oh, newcomers, yeah, I, I agree with that, newcomers. Right. I, you know, I right. That's... Yes, you can't, if you're a guardsman, would you would you want to would you want to be in a position if you're a soldier that one of these people could be injured? I mean, look what if you're a cop and you and you arrest a black guy and he resists arrest, you go to prison. Look at Derek Chauvin. You know, you, do you want to be the next Derek Chauvin? I understand, but the, I, I worry more about my life than the, the illegals. Uh, excuse me, the illegals. The new the, the newcomers. Newcomers. The newcomers. All right, take care. Appreciate the call. We'll be right back. Morning radio, great again. Thank you. Really it's the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. Oh man, it is pouring down rain outside. I almost rode the Vespa today. I'm glad I didn't. I had chicken pox. Eric, I, that was called sarcasm. Oh, it's raining pretty bad here. That sucks. It'll take me forever to get home if there's an accident somewhere.
one of the most popular poker tournaments in South Florida returns April 4th through the 7th. It's the $100,000 Monster Multi-Flight. Go to pbkennelclub.com for more information. Brian Cray here. If you're a homeowner, business owner, or with a homeowners association and your roof is all compromised, you need to call Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting. With a triple-A credit rating and bonded up to $10 million, Laporta Contracting doesn't need a large deposit like those other contractors do. Typical deposits other contractors want are one-third of the contract. <coughs> No, I need the rain because uh, I've got a new orange. I got a new orange tree in my backyard, a new lemon tree, a mango tree, and I forgot the other one. <clears throat> I knew it was going to rain this weekend, but I was hoping it would wait till I got home. Oh my goodness, 47 years and Trump's going to be the 47th president. Not a coincidence, I don't think. <clears throat> yeah, if you're on hold, stand by. Yeah, what's on your mind? <clears throat> no, no, no. First off, they haven't had the fundraiser yet. Letitia is fast-tracking everything, you know, so when the... What's the status on that? Steve, if they, I want you to think about this, okay? If they had a fundraiser tomorrow night, okay? People that pay for these fundraisers pay, they don't bring cash, okay? They pay with checks. So if they had the fundraiser Saturday night, for example, and they came with their checks, they won't even be able to deposit them until Monday, and then they got to clear. So that Letitia's moving, man. She's moving. She's. Does it address the, the source? I don't know. Story. Near post. The source give you any idea? No. No. No, I have nothing that's going to make you feel good, Steve. But I do know this. Trump's always Trump always wins in the end. Always. So I believe me, I'm not worried. 
Trump, Trump takes care of everything. He'll be fine. He'll, he'll figure this out. I have total 100% confidence in Trump. Maybe somebody on the phones says it's open for a Friday. Maybe somebody in our audience says it. Maybe, but they, they, Steve, they, they, the checks wouldn't clear. Letitia's moving quick. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? James from Boca. Hey, James. What's up, Jim? Whoa, gentlemen. Not too much dirt, are you? Uh, you know, in the last few weeks, as everything is moving downhill quickly, uh, what, are, what are the American people really going to do? Vote Trump in November. We got... Women being oh, harmed. Wait a minute, we have some border guards. Sir, Jim, Jim, when you say nobody knows what to do, I, 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 I'm a little confused. I will admit, but I, from what Brian okay, says, you solved. No, nothing solved right now. We have more open wounds. Mm. She. Mm -hmm. The border. We had, you know, start off with Afghanistan years ago, and then move up to now. See what what's going on here is what Glenn Beck's been talking about for years: the Cloward Piven strategy. They've got so many balls of crisis in the air; it's hard to focus in on just one, right? Well, it, yes. Good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. But but you're you're a doomsayer, you know. I believe no, not you, the caller. The, not you, Steve, the caller. Right now, is that we have 15, 20 million people in this country that are, it's going to be, but we're not going to be able to get rid of them. We have we have people getting hurt every day. The border from the border patrol clear up to New York. And, yeah. You know, uh, you can't you can't do anything to them. Illinois is now giving them the right to carry a gun. That's right. I mean, who, 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 they're taking the guns away from people in Illinois, look, you the know. Question, the question is, are these, obviously, from everything we've heard, it all points to this scenario whereby they uh, are able to give the vote. Now, Steve, we're gonna we're gonna win big, and Trump's gonna Trump is not gonna from the let me tell you from election night he's gonna come out and give his victory speech. He is not gonna have a full night's sleep until after he leaves office, okay? And the next president comes in in twenty twenty eight. There's more than he can do in four years to fix. But I keep telling you guys, and this is because you know I'm a I'm a positive thinking guy, okay? And and I and and so is Donald Trump. And look at what's happened here. Uh, there's been two big things that Trump's done. I keep telling you guys about, but a lot of you like to feel like we're losing all the time. One, Trump won all these primaries. He, he defeated the entire Republican and Democrat party establishment and machines who tried every tactic they had and, and they combined their forces. He defeated them in the primaries. That is huge, okay? Um, okay, the second thing is this. The Republican establishment has fallen. When the Trump family took over the RNC, that was it. They're out. The, 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 um, the power that the Republican establishment had was through the RNC. That's how they controlled all the money. Trump broke them. He bankrupted them. He, he was telling, he was, don't donate to the RNC, donate to me. Two, three years later, boom, they, they he, Broke them. They, they collapsed financially. He took over. Now we have Larry Trump over there keeping an eye on him. All right? So, I mean, these are those two things alone show you the, the, the miracles that Trump is able to pull off. Well, so I have no worries. I know that he's having sent, but I, I do. Uh, I know that he is having sent for us, but I, I just truly hope that something can be done. Because I. What? Well, dead soon? What? How old are you? What? How? What do you mean dead soon? Steve? Sixty? And you're? Oh my goodness! You're like half Steve's age. Well, you know, there's things in life that you don't know about. Oh, you have an illness? We'll just leave it at that. Well, a big day. All right. Well, listen. Pray, and we'll pray for you. No. 
No, I th thank you. And we well, I, hopefully nothing happens to you. We want you to stay well and be well and, uh, you know, and, and uh, see the greatness. Well, there's a lot of those strange calls these days, Steve. Oh, my goodness. Listen, if you're on hold, stand by. Uh, we're going to come back for the final segment of the week. Remember, it is open phones. Any and everything on your mind is fair game. You know, he's obviously got some condition where he's, you know, he he's terminal. So he's like clinically depressed over the over his terminal health condition. So I I understand that. Happy to talk to you. What am well, you know, what you know, I'm not Tony Robbins, Steve. I can't make everyone I can't, you know, I can't walk everyone off the edge of the cliff. We'll be right back. The cold hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve. All right, I've been waiting for this all day. I've been waiting to talk to William Youngerman. Uh, on the line from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated in Boca, we have William Youngerman with the final Gold and Precious Medals Report of the Week. So how's the week ending up, William? The week is uh, very good. We had an all-time record high <clears throat> for gold yesterday. Uh, put in as a trading range of 2165 on the low with $2,211 for the high for gold yesterday before putting in a bit of a reversal and closing down $5.60 on the day at $2,180.50 the ounce. Now, that's not unusual. Usually, we, we've seen this on more than one occasion when a gold will make a new record high and then reverse uh, and go lower on the day as profit taking comes in. And, uh, and certainly, sometimes uh, when we've had a, 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 a a major push upwards, uh, you see a little bit of a correction, which is what we all sit back and wait for, because then we take advantage of the dips. And that's what we got yesterday, uh, down $5.60, closing out the day at $2,180.50. Silver did similar. It got up to $25.78 before pushing back down to $24.67, <coughs> which was down $0.85 cents on the day. Uh, platinum closed unchanged at $906, and palladium was off $14 at $9.92 this morning. Uh, overnight, we saw gold trading in a range of $2,161 on the low to $2,175 so far this morning. Right now, at $2,174, down $6.50. And Silver uh, down two cents right now, at $24.65 the ounce. Platinum down six dollars at $900, and palladium down eleven dollars at $981. So a little bit of a pullback. Any of any? Oh man! So ye yesterday we hit a record high in gold. That is that a record high in the five thousand year history of gold being the only real money in the world? It sure is. Uh, that's nuts. Eleven dollars. <laughs> Highest in five thousand years. Oh my goodness, that's insane. So <laughs> when when people are are calling in or stopping in to buy gold, because that's where it's at today, guys. I was like, what 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 is, is there anything in particular that they they want, or are people just trying to get gold in general? Yeah, it, the the, um, the the availability of products is so diverse right now that it gives people a wide selection of, of beautiful coins and bars and different things to choose from. And the premiums being at, at the lowest they we've seen in a long time gives them a, not only a great opportunity to, to pick and choose what they like, but they can get it at a great buy, a great value. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing I want to talk to you about, I do bring this up to you from time to time, and I know people do this, and this is a great time to do it. A lot of times, you know, uh, people got a lot of silver they because they get you know, they buy a little bit of time. How about turning silver into gold? How, how does that process work, and is that something people are doing? Yeah, we do see that uh, people who have accumulated a lot of silver and, and and are dealing with the weight and the storage problems, and then see silver come up like it's done recently. Sometimes do take advantage and, and say, oh, I think I'll trade in some of my silver, get some affordable gold that I can put in my hand and carry anywhere and. Um, and so we see a lot of that, and it's uh, it's very feasible to do it at certain times. Absolutely. Listen, William Youngman opens up at 10 a.m. Stop in. 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. Uh, on the same floor as the bank lobby, directly across from the bank. Online, williamyoungerman.com, or give him a call, one 800 Three two seven fifty ten. I imagine the phones are very busy over there. there I, I, you must have a phone on each ear, uh, as hot as things are, William Youngerman. 1-800-327-5010. All right, I look forward to touching base on Monday. Okay, have a great All right, we'll be back. Steve King Show is on. 
All right, there's only one opening on the board where William Youngman was at, and I'm going to try to take these in the order in which they were received. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Talking to me, Steve. Yes. Uh, look, this is uh, this is Andrew Santonio. I want to. And how you doing, Steve? How you doing, Brian? I'm doing good, I wanna, Antonio. I, I want to ask one thing, and this is for both of you guys. I mean, really, truly, is the election going to be safe? Danielle, listen, Donald Trump, I just told the last caller, I'll tell you, okay? Donald Trump just beat the machines of the Republic. Let me, let me finish. You don't want to hear it, though. Okay, feel like a loser. He just, beat, he just beat the entire machine of both parties in the primaries. And they pulled, every, they arrested him multiple times. They got mug shots. They, they were getting Democrats to vote uh, for other candidates, rather Republicans in the primary. He beat their entire operation from sea to shining sea. So what are you, you know, what are you feeling like a loser for? That's amazing. You think they let him do that? He hung up because he doesn't want to, you know, some, he hung up. I did not, some, some people want to feel like losers, Steve. What is that about? All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I be a power. Steve, how you doing, old boy? I be. I be a good. Uh, it's a good oh no! Great week. Great show. Let me think really quickly. Uh, Brian might remember when um, I called him on a, one of his weekend shows. My brother was an atheist. Long story short, Brian, you remember the Clevelander on Tenth and Ocean Drive, right? Mm-hmm. That was my beginning party spot before I hit the clubs. Meet a guy sitting at the bar. These two beautiful girls. I look to my left. Oh my gosh, we want to meet a girl happy. I go, I didn't know what I was going to say. I go straight to the girl and they said, hey. We got a bad connection, IB. As you're, you're, I know you're trying to relive the glory days of hooking up on the beach, but we can't hear it. You'll have to call another day. All right? Oh my goodness. You're on the air. It's open phones. You know? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name's Steve, and I'm calling from that great northern state called Indiana. All right, what's up? Steve, what's up? Uh, it's cold, but outside of that, I hear you joined some rain down there. I'm listening to you on YouTube this morning. And uh, I was uh, I just want to pass on that uh, I was drafted back in 1968. That was a great year. And uh, I spent some time in New Jersey uh, for it, learning my trades at that time. And they have a thing that they taught us in basic training that was called the vertical butt stroke. And I'm sure if a person was to attack me, because I spent a lot of time on guard duty, and if someone yeah. went through that gate and they attacked me, I would perform the vertical butt stroke. And I don't know if you know what to do with that. Um, I, well, th this, is the, this is the thing, okay? You're, you're in the Army? Okay, you went to basic training in 1968. You know, and my father went to basic training in 1968, and he told me the drill instructors could punch him, okay? Now, in, the, in basic training, you know, half the guys are wearing dresses. They spend a quarter of basic training introducing them to critical race theory. They spend another quarter telling them uh, about how, you know, I don't know what they tell them. It's not the same military we used to have in 68, man, okay? Yeah, well, that's true. It has changed. Yeah, I think... Well, it'll change real. It'll change back real fast when Don's. Yeah, so we don't ha we don't have tough soldiers right now. We you know like we had when you went to basic training. We've got uh, critical race theorists and uh, I mean look, they got admirals, the guys, admirals with penises wearing dresses in uniform. Well, that sets the tones. You, you don't think they have transgendered enlisted? Are you kidding me? Well, they had transgestors listed when I was in basic training, but they kept it a secret, and the military didn't want to know about your gender. Yeah. So if you can fight and be trained to shoot somebody. They don't, they don't do that anymore. No, they don't even give bullets to these guys. It's a different army, man. Yeah, well, yeah, I was with the, uh, after I studied uh, left basic training in Fort Dix, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, first, uh, first, uh, first infantry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I left, when I left there and went to basic training, I went to a, a place down in, oh, uh, not Oklahoma, in uh, Kentucky that was special, special operations. Yeah. Spent some time down there. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, if you, if you think, if, if, I mean, I want you guys to be serious about this, okay? You know, this, um, I, I saw this, this lady uh, army general talking to Congress last week. She had her, st she was four star general. Her shoulder wasn't even big enough for the stars. The stars were going down this. This is not the same army you were in. This is an army of wimps uh, and of just, it, it's, it's a great army if you're China and you want to attack America. Uh, but it's not an army that is military, military ready to protect us. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, Brian, I'm calling from Broward County. This is Rod. Mm -hmm. We we got to pull together. Trump must win. We got to get everybody he will. together. A little minor differences. We got to pull those aside. Trump has to win, and we have to have a Congress uh, and a Senate. I mean, look at look at what just happened. You know, I, I, at the end of yesterday's show, I, I told a caller, I said, look at Mike Johnson. He's trying to find a way to pass uh, the Ukraine funding and Biden's budget and try to act like he's MAGA. And look what they did. They came to an agreement. They should shut down the damn government until they get Merrick Garland and these jerks off Trump's back. All right. Why are they? Why did they pass this budget? We got a we we, we do not have a MAGA speaker. We got a wimp. Now, this is what I'm saying. We got to work together. They That's right. Fight, quit fighting each other in public. Sit down and talk. Work out deals. That's our side. Mm -hmm. Democrats. Yeah. One more thing. We got to keep Democrats away from children. We've got mm. to save children in this country. Yes, that's true. All right, you're right about that. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Stephen Brian. It's JJ. Hey, JJ. Um, I was thinking about this uh, Letitia James and, uh, well, Judge and Moron and Letitia and this reading off the money that you were reading off in her bank accounts. And I, it, it just, it's, um, it's very upsetting. But I, I think about New York, comparing New York State to Florida State, and it can kind of give you an idea of how she got that money in her accounts and all this corruption that's going on. Because New York... Listen, we know, we know how she got it, okay? It's like when Trump, sent, when Trump sent the respirators during the pandemic, they were going in the front door of the hospital and, and then a truck at the back of the hospital, right? Right, you know? It's she's she's a crook. They are. I mean, yeah. For a two hundred and forty-five point eight billion, Florida with two million more people, their budget for the entire state is one hundred and fifteen point nine billion. See, see. One hundred and thirty billion more dollars. So that's why they all they're all so damn corrupt. See, the re one of the reasons that they keep thinking they're going to find corruption with Trump is because everybody they know got rich through corruption, and they can't fathom that a guy made his billions honestly. Exactly. They, they don't even think that exists, but it does. It does. Okay. All right. Take care. Thank you. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Of course. Thank you. Hey, Richard. Yeah, like the caller from yesterday um, that said he was going to leave for Portugal after he retired. I thought that was a pretty great idea because it is kind of looking hopeless with all the corruption mm -hmm. uh, here in the state. Yeah. And to live here if, if it's Biden gets in. The where, where are you from originally? I'm not kidding you, man. New York. New York. That's not. That sounded like a Canadian accent, and you said the states. I never hear Americans say the states. Canadians say the states, and you had a slight Canadian accent. It sounded like, but okay. If you want to stick with that New York story, since '85, yeah. No, I was born in, in Brooklyn, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm about eight years from retirement age, but after I retire, I don't know if I'd be able to live. I'm a public servant. Unlike Letitia James, I don't have these millions, but. Uh, that's because you left New York. You should have stayed in New York. You'd be a millionaire, too. True. More union jobs, too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. I mean, when you got Navarro in jail, in jail for uh, contempt of Congress and, um, you know, Fauci is free, even though he lied. Yeah. Congress, I don't know Only Republicans go to prison. 
Only Republicans go to prison, just like Nixon. Chris, hypocrisy is just terrible here. Mm-hmm. Your accent is not, I'm not saying you're not from New York. You do not have a New York accent. You do not have a Florida accent. You've got an accent. I'm an online gamer and I hang out with a lot of Canadians. On I told, didn't I not tell you it was a Canadian accent? And you said the States. You sh are you sh okay, I am I good? Am I, I tell you. Yeah, wait till you see my gaydar at work. Let's see. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. Clyde from Houston. How are you? All right, Mike. Well, uh, the couple of callers that called in earlier, I want to say that that's what the Democrats want. Is they, they want us to start, they want us to, they want to spread defeatism. Yeah. Feel like losers. Yeah, defeatist losers. So we don't show up at the polls. Yes. What? We vote for Nikki Haley. And, 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 and I'll tell you this, we're, we're up against the end of the show, and the rest of you on hold, stand by. We'll be back Monday morning at 6 a.m., and if you're on hold now, you'll be first in line Monday morning at 6. Um, a lot of these, that's true, I'm saying the people on um, and, and if you call in next week and remind me that you called at the end, I'll let you go longer, okay? I'll give you a special time. Um, a lot of these callers that call in and say these things, they're fake MAGA trying to dis they're trying to discourage our MAGA people from from showing up in November. Like, what's the point? I'm going to Portugal. They'll do it again, and all this, and da 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 da. da. They're prop. Yeah, they're Toki. They're a bunch. They're they're a bunch of to they're they're a bunch of fake MAGA Tokyo roses. But like I said, and I completely agree. They're, it's a, an op. They, they want. And they're an op. All right, we're 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 out of time, but uh, we'll we'll talk next time. Okay, I'll give you more time next time. It's the end of the show. I'm Brian. Steve Kane's here. We'll be back Monday morning at six a.m. CFS one hundred four point three. All right, guys, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. Everyone else, please like the video. All right, and I will be back over the weekend. So. Uh,